and welcome to vlog 113 my wonderful viewers there is a vlog every two weeks so if you don't want to miss any make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell i am the audiophile barista and in these vlogs i talk about audio coffee and other things that keep me busy and for today of course the big thing is did i do it did i sell my itos equipment well let's have a look And there it is guys, I sold my ITOS equipment. So this spot is empty, this spot is empty. This is where the power section was of the preamp. And this spot is empty, and this is where the preamp was standing. So I sold my ITOS equipment and this was probably the most difficult audio decision I have ever made in my life. So let's talk about it. First off, for those of you who are new to the channel, I listened to a set of ITOS OTL monoblocks for some 12 years and they were the perfect match for my 98 dB Ocelia loudspeakers. The sound was absolutely amazing. So why did I sell them? Well, they were also over 35 years old and they started to have some problems. Repairs were done by the man who originally designed and built these amplifiers, which was perfect of course, but it was also a bit too costly for me. So something had to change. Now when selling a project that most people don't know, you really need to find someone who knows and appreciates the brand. Someone who understands the quality of the set and who will understand that it's not going to be a 500 euro deal. So when I saw an advert some two weeks ago where someone was actually looking for a ITO set, I knew I had to react. We took our time to negotiate the price and last night he and a friend finally came to my house to listen to the setup and now they are his. Now what was very interesting is that these people actually knew their stuff. One of the guys was a bit older but a well known person in the Dutch high end tube and horn loudspeaker scene. They knew the builder of the idol set and they were also close friends with a Dutch guy that is making loudspeakers that are based on the same philosophy as my Ocelia loudspeakers. So they were also familiar with the Phi drivers. They even even brought their own loudspeakers to test the Aitos amplifiers. And that was a first for me. And this was only one of his loudspeakers because these guys also have crazy huge horn and open baffle loudspeakers in their collection. So this was a set of Rogers loudspeakers, the 15 ohm version. So I picked up my wonderful dreadnought stands to place the Rogers on and the guy was extremely happy because at his home he has his Rogers on the exact same stands. I told you, these guys know their stuff. So suddenly I had a set of Rogers LS35 a loudspeakers in direct comparison to my Ocelia's on the same setup. So we listened to some vinyl and CDs on the Ocelia and then we switched to the Rogers. Now of course they brought their own CDs to listen to, so I let them and I made them some coffee. The friend took his coffee black and the buyer wanted black with a little milk. So a little later I was telling them about how I got my Ocelia loudspeakers when the buyer took his first sip of coffee and he immediately stopped me mid-sentence to tell me that this was the best coffee he had ever tasted. So that was a nice bonus. It is really very satisfying when someone is really, really enjoying a cup of coffee that you made. So back to the comparison between the Rogers and the Ocelia. Well, if you love your Rogers LS35A, make sure to never compare them to a loudspeaker like the Ocelia. This was no contest, not even close. The Ocelia's played so much better with the Aitos than the Rogers did. Now to be fair, this was of course in a room that is much too big for the Rogers and the Ocelia's have a sensitivity of 98 dB compared to 82 for the Rogers. But it made me realize that a high efficiency loudspeaker on a OTL setup is really something special. It almost made me doubt my decision to sell the Aitos. But as you now know, I did sell them and I'm happy with the price that I got for them. These guys knew what they were buying and they were willing to pay the price. I don't think I could have had a better deal on these 35 year old amplifiers, so that eases the pain a little bit. So to finish off this little announcement, I am sad and I am happy. It's going to be a challenge to find a better partner for the Ocelias, but many people are looking out for me, so who knows what the future will bring. I'm also going to try and sell some more of my other gear in order to raise the budget even higher and see if I can raise the quality of my setup over that of the Aitos Ocelia combination. If you guys have any suggestions, please put it in the comment section. I'm looking for suggestions in the 4 to 5,000 euro range and this may be peanuts in the high end scene, 
but I have never been able to go out and spend that kind of money on one piece of equipment. So I'm very excited to start this new adventure. Now I don't know if it's going to be tubes or transistors. History has told me that I'm always ending up with tubes, but who knows what happens today. I don't know if it's going to be integrated or preamp and a power amp or preamp and double mono. I'm open to suggestions. So if you have any suggestions, leave them in the comment section below. Most important thing for me is that they play nice with a 16 ohm 98 dB broadband loudspeaker. Now let's get back to the vlog. So and now that everything is empty, let's make sure to fill it up again. Okay, so here on the left side we have the part where we want a amplifier and as you can see there is a turntable so the requirements for the amplifier are that it can play phono. Now I would love to have my Neukom amplifier over here but there's two problems with that. One, I need longer loudspeaker cables than I have at the moment. And two, it does not have a phono amp. So the Rega Mira 3 is an option. It does have a phono stage, but then again, this is an integrated amplifier, which means I need to have longer loudspeaker cables. So for the coming time, I'm choosing the AVM preamplifier, which does have a phono stage. It even has a headphone output and it is a preamp. So now all I have to worry about is the power amplification. So over here is of course the spot for the two mono amps that I had. So now let's see what kind of power amplification I can use. So my preferred choice would be the Neukom again, but the Neukom does not have a preamp input. So I cannot use it as just a power amp. Next up is the Rega Mira 3. This does have a preamp input and can be used just as a power amp. So as you can see, the Rega has a preamp output for use with an external power amp. But if you want to use a different preamp, you can use the power amp input, meaning that you can use the Rega as purely a stereo power amp and connect your loudspeakers via the loudspeaker connectors. Okay. As you can see, the record player is connected. Over here we have the AVM Evolution V1 preamplifier. Some cables in there from the record player. One for the Blue Sound Note 2i streamer, one for the PS Audio uh, deck, the New Wave deck, and one for the Oppo Blu ray player. And this is the pre out. Moving on to what is now the power amplifier and not the integrated amplifier anymore. So on the rear, we have the input from the preamplifier. We have the outputs for the loudspeaker cables and power, of course. So this thing now does not react to the volume meter anymore. It is just bypassed and the volume is now controlled by this boy over here. And this is the setup. The white loudspeaker cables are the Oyaides going into the Ocilias. And I don't remember if I have shown you this already. This is the Audiolab 6000 CDT. This is a CD player, but this is only a transport. And I'm telling you, Oh, it is still playing, so let's see. Okay, just a few seconds. So, not to get called out by YouTube. 
but this is a transport and I'm telling you guys this thing is really really great so that is um, connected to the PS Audio new wave deck via coax cable and from there it goes into the preamp and out to the power amp okay so that's all that I have for you guys today so let's finish this up it is getting a bit more cloudy over here in Rotterdam but beautiful sky today and not too windy so today is Friday have a nice weekend and I'll see you in the next one